Ancient Egyptians utilized the waters of the Nile River throughout their history, which led to the creation of their advanced civilization. Modern Egyptians have sought to exploit the waters of the Nile for irrigation purposes, flood control, electric power, and to meet their usage demands. The Egyptians always strove to harness the power of the Nile River, but it was never possible until the 20th century, when the Cold War pitted two superpowers against each other in an effort to influence the future of Egypt. The Aswan High Dam is located 950 kilometers south of Cairo and measures 3,600 meters long, 111 meters high, and at the base it is 980 meters. 43 million cubic meters of material were used in its construction, and its reservoir is the second largest in the world. In 1848, Muhammad Ali Pasha seized power in Egypt and immediately sought to pull his country out of ages of backwards thought and technology. It is for these reasons that he is considered the father of modern Egypt. He wanted to create a modern civilization through the implementation of new irrigation systems, which would transform the waters of the Nile into lucrative cash crops, which could be exported and provide desperately needed money that would be used for industrialization. Following the British invasion of 1882, Ali Pasha's plans were blocked because the British had their own agenda for economic development in the region. In 1889, planning began for a dam in Aswan that was designed and built with the aid of the British, who sought to expand cotton cultivation within Egypt. Britain did not want an industrial Egypt. They simply wanted to increase the production of cotton. They recognized the need for more water, and the Aswan Low Dam was commissioned to provide irrigation and more arable land. After its completion, it soon became apparent that the height of the dam would never be adequate to handle the water level of the reservoir. After considerable flooding, the dam was raised in two phases, first in 1907 and then again in 1929. The British declared Egypt a protectorate and used its territories as a base from which to conduct wartime operations during World War I. In 1936, the British signed a revised treaty with Egypt, which confined their activities strictly to the Canal Zone. This treaty resulted in greater autonomy than they had ever experienced under British control. However, the treaty had a weakness. The British could return in a national emergency. Such an emergency arrived in the form of World War II. The British did not leave after the war and remained until 1952, when the Free Officers' Coup was implemented by members of the Egyptian military. They seized control of the government and proclaimed it the Republic of Egypt. Gamal Abdul Nasser would emerge as the leader in face of the revolution. Their ultimate goal in seizing control of Egypt was to remove the last remnants of British colonialism. Construction of the Aswan Low Dam was based on the need to create more irrigated farmland instead of simply losing their water to the sea. The construction of the high dam was for the purposes of relieving the annual flooding of the Nile as well as the creation of electricity. The dam was not the only option for dealing with these problems. There had always been a proposal called the Century Storage Scheme. This alternate plan proposed a series of dams that would make the Nile a single hydrological unit. The reason that the high dam project was accepted rather than the alternate plan was due to many factors. First of all, the Egyptians could exert total control of the project rather than deal with the other states upstream who were mostly controlled by Britain. Second, the single large dam at Aswan could be completed in about 10 years compared to the 20 years it would take to complete the alternate plan. This was too long term for a new regime which sought to enact bold initiatives. Third, the dam would create a large amount of electrical power which Nasser's regime wished to use in order to accelerate growth in Egypt's burgeoning industries. The alternate plan was not designed to provide this type of power at any comparable level. The decision was made to proceed with the planning for the Aswan High Dam within two months of the 1952 Free Officers Coup. The reservoir created by the High Dam, called Lake Nasser, would provide protection during flooding and times of drought. It was also intended to deal with the population explosion that was occurring in Egypt. At the time of the High Dam's construction, the entire country covered 386,000 square miles, but the population of Egypt occupied only 13,900 square miles along the banks of the Nile. 
This made Egypt's population density one of the highest in the world. These extreme living conditions led to 90% of Egypt's citizens living in dire poverty. An overwhelming majority of the population was employed in agriculture. Through the building of the High Dam, Nasser hoped to increase Egypt's arable lands by 30% in a 10 to 20 year period. They hoped to be able to feed the growing population and ultimately raise living standards. The electrical power generated would bring about industrialization that Nasser hoped would lead to the construction of factories producing a variety of goods including cement, fertilizer, porcelain, jute, and paper. The dam would also ensure year-round navigation of the Nile, which in the past had been difficult during flood seasons. It is for these reasons that the building of the high dam at Aswan was seen as the single most important project to the Nasser regime. In 1952, the dam became part of Nasser's five-year plan for socio-economic development. The United States offered economic assistance to Egypt in order to pay for the dam's $1.3 billion price tag. Under the agreement, the Egyptian government was supposed to provide $550 million for the construction of the dam. $400 million was supposed to be supplied by private investors, with an additional $400 million to be supplied by the U.S., the U.K., and the World Bank. One of the main stipulations for procuring funds from the West was that Egypt finally come to an agreement with the other riparian states regarding the distribution of the Nile waters. The Egyptian government had to obtain enough water rights so that the dam project would be deemed viable and effective. The reason for Western interest in the funding of the high dam was based more on politics than economics. Nasser 